are here at AWS Marketplace Seller Conference 2024. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. Joining me now, Mona Chata, the Director of Worldwide Infrastructure for Technology Partnerships at AWS. An exciting job, tell us what that means. What does that mean? That means that I have the opportunity and the privilege to work with some amazing uh, partners, specifically across uh, categories like uh, in infrastructure. And what that means is, there are categories that include security, networking, storage, database, data and analytics, DevOps, cloud ops, generative AI. So I have the you know, opportunity to just work with a whole different types of um, partners that offer really innovative solutions to end customers. And of course, they're all built and integrated with AWS services. So they're all also available in AWS Marketplace. Yeah. And what we've seen over the past few years, we talked to Matt a little bit ago and he said, you know, it used to be an app store and now it's evolved to so much more. Tell us about how your role fits into that and how your the partners you work with yeah. are playing in, and discovering more with AWS Marketplace. Yeah, no, that's really good because, you know, so as we think about the partnerships, a key element of the partnerships that we have is AWS Marketplace. So we have this notion of build, market, sell. So the build component is all about how do you integrate with AWS services? And then how do you, that basically augments your product. How do you then bring back to life in terms of market? How do we get that in the hands of the end customer? And then the sell aspect of it is really how do we then co-sell with you? How do we bring our field organizations together to then develop that joint solution and bringing those that organ like bringing those solutions together to customers also includes channel partners. So they're a huge component of our co-sell as well. So that's kind of how marketplace uh, is an element of all of those components. And so as you also think about build, you got to think about well, how are you going to monetize your solution? And so what does that look like? Does that look like a private offer? Does that look like a pay go? Do I want to offer a free trial? Do I want to offer things like? Um, you know, how do I want to add on some of my components? Like, do I want to create a contract but then ultimately have a consumption component of it? So, you know, it really, Marketplace ends up being an, a key pillar across all build, market, and sell. So, I think, you know, it's, and it's been, as we sort of have um, integrated AWS Marketplace within the AWS partner organization, increasingly as we've done that, Marketplace has just been, become one of the key pillars for co-selling and a key almost uh, channel for a lot of our partners to gain access to our AWS customers. And let's talk about the success of AWS Marketplace. Let's talk about some of the growth, maybe over the past year, past couple of years. Yeah, yeah, the growth has been, uh, you know, amazing. I would say, you know, we're transacting in the billions, multiple billions, and that's been something that, uh, you know, where we've seen growth rates, you know, in the triple digits, if you will, right? And then we have 2.5 million subscribers, and you know we have just uh, you know thousands of applications and solutions, and these applications are not only you know in categories like you know what I offer, but also uh, solutions across um, business applications. Increasingly, more and more. So we had Salesforce as an example, who kind of shattered all of our records for like you know largest opportunity right. size, size the fastest sort of um, you know seller that's been in the marketplace since they you know since they listed to you know getting transacted. So. You know, really, we've um, just been able to propel our um, business to this level where um, we have a ton more adoption of our buyers. And did I read this right? 100% of the top thousand customers use AWS yes. Marketplace. Yes, correct. That alone is impressive. Yes, that's a thousand right. customers. They're all on board. They're all on board. All of our top uh, 1,000 customers are using AWS Marketplace. That's right. You mentioned Gen AI. Tell us about some of the use cases and how those play in. Yeah. So, um, it, look, you can't go a second without talking right. about no. generative AI, right? So many of our, pretty much every single one of our partners is using generative AI in some ways, embedding it into their applications. For example, in like security, we have you know, partners that are um, creating things like um, not just chatbots, but also embedding generative AI into their solutions, for example, in security, so then they're able to be more proactive on any sort of threats that are upcoming. And then not only, to get a view of what that looks like across all of the different sort of platforms that they have, but also be able to remediate yeah. and reduce risk and then provide solutions quickly. So all of our partners are really um, embedding generative AI and especially our generative AI capability 
Bedrock is, has been one of our you know, fast growing services where you know, in being able to um, access the right a large language model for your use case yeah. through Bedrock has been just sort of game changing for our ISVs as they try to um, deliver more generative AI solutions to their own customers. And I imagine one of the ways that you're looking forward to be able to increase not only the use of generative AI, but also increasing the efficiency and simplification is through the use of the APIs. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so part of, you know, look, it's interesting because um, I think, you know, Matt Y in the keynote, yeah. he talked about all the different iterations we have with APIs. And you know, we really got it got started early with our whole um, API journey because what we realized is that we can't build it all ourselves. In that we want to be able to share the marketplace experience with others, and we want marketplace to truly be everywhere. So, how do you do that? The best way to do that is to deliver APIs that your partners and your sellers can consume in order to either integrate with some of our features, functionality, and then bring that marketplace experience to wherever they are. And that's been, like I said, that's another sort of game changing um, thinking that we've incorporated into our sort of product roadmap, uh, roadmap strategy and one that our ISVs and channel partners are loving things like the discovery API. There's going to be a procurement, a, a procurement API. Um, and so that way what they're able to do is just transact faster and transact where the customer is at. Exciting stuff. Now you personally, yeah. looking ahead, Crystal yeah. Ball, what are you most excited about? What are you and I going to be sitting here at a similar table talking about next year? So I, so here's what I think, and, and some people might be like, that's not as exciting, but I'll tell you it is, is, you know, we talked about in the keynote a bit, is pay as you go, and okay. that self-service strategy. I think, you know, look, that's kind of where we started. That was our initial DNA, was to really have this motion where customers are, are able to access any product that they want, and they're able to test it out. They can take advantage of a free trial. They can figure out how to quickly launch it and then uh, be able to figure out, well, this is the product that I want, this works, and get it into their production environment quickly, fast. Sure. And having that sort of end-to-end -end, uh, you know, visibility into that and creating that end-to-end -end workflow, that's what's going to allow our customers to run faster. And that's what we want, is be able to get them to run faster. So you know, my sort of thinking, what I'm most excited about is are things like how we develop capabilities, leveraging our own generative AI capabilities to give our, our customers and our ISVs uh, and channel partners knowledge of like, this is what the end customer wants. Okay. This is the product, this is the solution that they want. And guess what, you know what? They maybe uh, cut short the free trial because this wasn't what they're looking for. Here's what they're looking for. Right. Now we can give that intel back to the, uh, the channel partner, to the ISV, so that they are able to give better products to their end customers. And then we're able, like when they land anywhere, they get, we give them more of a guided buying experience. So then that way they don't come to the marketplace and they're like, I don't know what to do, or I know exactly what I want and that's all I'm looking at and they have blinders on. They can now look at the entire universe and then based on whatever their you know, configuration is, whatever product they, they're looking for, whatever use case they're trying to satisfy or whatever challenge they're trying to solve, they have, they, can, they have this guided buying experience based on what they're looking for. And then we take them through that journey, we let them evaluate products, we let them, you know, down, you know uh, we let them sort of figure out how do you gain access to that product without breaking the bank or without, right. you know, breaking any compliance rules in your organization. So integrating kind of the uh, full suite of features and functionalities that we have with standardized contracts, vendor insights, which is very important for governance yep. and compliance. And then taking advantage of all of our security capability too, because that's a key thing. Um, you know, and CISOs appreciate this because they're like, look, I don't want people to just build applications or access applications that aren't safe, that do not have that security mentality built in. Well, guess what? When products come into the marketplace, we do that vetting. We have security vetting so you know that you can trust the solutions there. So really it's about like, what I'm excited about is that customers take advantage of our full suite of capability and then being able to run faster with, um, with what we have and then being able to pinpoint the right solution they need for their use case. So it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, it's almost like going back to the basics, but having Gen AI alongside with That's you right. 
to be able to give you all of the features in a more simplified in way. In a simplified way, in an automated, simplified notion, and in a way that's familiar yeah. to you. Because I think that's the thing that ultimately um, is a blocker, right? Is the fact that this is not familiar to me and I have to go relearn something. So I want more of a familiar experience. So doing all that, it's just that's just nirvana for everyone. That is. <laughs> That is fantastic, and I look forward to hearing more about that as we progress. Mona Chowda, Director of Worldwide Infrastructure Technology Partnerships, AWS. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. Thanks for watching.